I've been a traveling man. All my life I've been a traveling man. Staying alone and doing the best I can. It's now April 2023 and we are heading towards the Channel Tunnel. Unusually, instead of getting through the tunnel and turning right and chasing the sun, we're going to turn left and head to the land of the Midnight Sun. So we are off to Norway via Germany, Denmark. In Norway, up the west coast, not too sure we'll get to the Lofoten Islands yet, but certainly north of the Arctic Circle and then across into Sweden and down across the uh, Arsland Bridge back into Denmark so essentially a big loop over the next 90 days One thing we're hoping for is slightly decent roads on our, on our journey not too sure what to expect most of what we've read said the, the road network is very good and it's got to be a vast improvement on these, uh, these potholes. Avec tes souvenirs sur les bras Et moi je revois ce qui reste Mes vingt ans font battre ton bout Je vois s'entrebattre des gestes Toute la comédie des amours Sur cette terre qui va toujours Padam, padam, padam Des je t'aime de 14 juillet Padam, padam, padam Here he goes then Onto the train Unusually we were actually delayed Which is the first time that's happened to us So essentially there's an hour An hour plus delay Which means by the time we get into France it's going to be dark So drive on the right, drive on the right, drive on the right And remember to put the headlights on Here it goes, French France. We're actually heading over to Sangatti, to the, the air, which is there. Stayed there before. It's only about a 10 minute drive from here, so nice and straightforward. The idea is overnight there, and then we've got a full day's worth of driving tomorrow. Left Sangetti and headed north towards Arnhem. So a bit of a long drive today, about 230, 240 miles. And we got caught in very heavy traffic just south of Antwerp, but by the by. Um, Sangetti, I haven't actually put the position into the video. Main reason being that since we've been away, the actual air has been closed down by the local council, which is quite sad. It was very, very convenient. First stop is Camping Warnsbourne, just outside Arnhem. Conning plan really, we've been driving essentially for two days, so we thought we'd have a, a few days in a campsite just to relax a little bit. Um, and we want to go into Arnhem as well, so it's not too far on the bikes. Stay away from dawn to dust, from dust 
nice campsite, set in some woods, normal facilities. Reception staff were very helpful, very friendly, and had excellent English, as you'd expect from the Dutch. Also, as you'd expect from the Dutch, lots and lots of cycle lanes in and around. So, into Arnhem, had a look at the bridge, and had a wander around the museum there, which was very, very interesting, actually. to Bremen now and as to be expected because it is April showers lots of into Germany and on the outskirts of Bremen so new country here for us we are heading towards a Stellplatz that we found on Google Maps just on the outskirts of town on the banks of the river didn't realise until this point that even though the lights are on green for us to turn right, the cyclists can still whiz across the road. Arriving at the Stellplatz now, it's actually situated by the river in the Monk Summer Lottens. So as settings go, it's all rather pleasant. Get to the barrier, the normal faff. Do we need to go forward? Do we need to go back? Do we take a ticket now? Do we take a ticket when we leave? Do we pay now? Do we pay when we leave? Anyway, you take a ticket. And that also gives you access to the toilets and showers over on the left. Once you're in, find a parking spot and away you go. If you need electricity, it's an extra charge. So you need to pop 10 bob in the meter and then when it runs out, you pop another 10 bob in. Well, euros actually. Not the best start of the day, however, we are going into Bremen. Choices, we can walk all the way around or we can catch a little ferry that runs across the river Weser and is about a five minute walk from the campsite. So we caught the ferry. bit blurry now as you can see however the sun did come out on occasion and that gave us the opportunity to go into the old town and take a few photographs The Brothers Grimm wrote a fairy tale about the Bremen musicians and there is an official statue to them in bronze 
in the town. There are also a number of variations on the theme scattered about. Fortified with coffee and cake, we headed back across the river on the ferry. Still windy, still blowy. And we happen to be there on the one day when the man is hosing down the jetty. Sun finally came out and now it's a short walk back to the Stellplatz. We've now left Bremen and are heading towards Kiel. Well, in fact, it's the east of Kiel. There is a German Second World War U-boat and the German War Memorial at a place called Le Beau. And that's where we're heading now. Large car park, which also takes motorhomes. It costs a small fortune. Oh, moho. Costs a small fortune, but that's where we're overnighting. There's a posh chemical toilet point which cleans out your tanks for you but apart from that no services whatsoever. 25 euros it costs and bizarrely the machines don't take notes so you have to go down to the little cafe at the end of the, uh, the roadway here and talk to them very nicely and they'll actually change the notes into coins and then you spend hours and hours and hours and hours feeding the machine to get your tickets. Not convinced anybody else bothered, but um, we did. And that's what I've come to see. U995, a Type 7 Charlie U-boat from the Kriegsmarine, Nazi Germany Kriegsmarine, laid down in 1942 and she actually did a few patrols. So, having paid your pennies, you enter through the stern of the submarine into the after torpedo room and go forward through the electric motor room and then into the diesel generator shack. After that, it's the accommodation, followed by a control room, galley, officer's accommodation and the forward torpedo room. For the spotters amongst you, four stroke, six cylinder, supercharged diesel engines. Driving two shafts. Maximum speed of around about 20 knots on the surface and six or seven when dived.
on into the main control area and the galley. Forward torpedo compartment. So four torpedo tubes forward and one aft. The U995 actually did five patrols in the latter part of the Second World War as part of uh, German wolf packs. But at the end of it, she was actually stricken at Trondheim in Norway. I was given to the Norwegians having surrendered to the British. The Norwegians then ran for quite a few years and eventually offered her back to the West German government for the price of one mark. Right, that's enough recent history. We're now off to Denmark to see what the Vikings got up to. <laughs> 